All right, here's my analysis of Metropolis from the year 1927, a German production uh, by Fritz Lang. And um, I watched a version that is like 150 minutes long. It's a very long film. And I encourage you to uh, check it out and I encourage you to study it a bit more because I'm quite overwhelmed by this movie and I'm like, surprised I never watched it before because it's now instantly one of my favorite movies. Um, they just restorated it. Like you could say it's a director's cut now in the 150 minutes version because they found, refound some sh some shots like about, I don't know, 40, 50 minutes that have been lost only in Argentina, only in 2008. So um, let's, let's just start here. And um, I'll begin with a shot uh, from, from the movie, which shows that there's a lot of model work or, I don't know, model bau in German, I don't know. They work with that and, they sh and there's high contrast in black and white. Of course, it's a silent movie in black and white, but it also creates style. And um, there's wide shots and there's close-ups. And uh, they are contrasting lots of things here, old and new. Like here, there's like a big tower. It, it looks kind of dangerous, like a watchtower, but also like a church. And um, you can see the high contrast, white and black. Here we are in the office of the father with his son. It's like uh, overwatching his kingdom, and it's a control room, basically. Um, we are uh, We can see there's a lot of symbology, if we can look beyond, uh, underneath the surface. And... Um, there's an upper world and a lower world. And in the lower world, there's human beings. It's like there's a heaven and there's earth. So in the lower world, human beings have to work. And it's all like clockwork. And it's uh, very dramatic and seems like very dystopian, very futuristic, though it's also working with old myths. Here we can see Fear, the son of the boss, basically. And he's grabbing his heart because now he kind of like found his passion to help the people on earth. Like, so it's got to go down. And there's the heart machine. It's like uh, everything has been invented by the father, you know, and uh, the machines are the invention, I think, of God. And, and this is like the heart machine. It's a symbology from you and art. And the humans have to work to keep it moving and to keep it working. So they're basically humans or sinners. And then there's uh, like even close-ups of machinery. And this is like a church organ. It looks like a church organ, but also adds drama. And there's a lot of shades of gray. Here we can see someone um, working at a machine which looks like a clock so it's like clockwork all the time even the clocks seem to uh, move faster in this movie and Feder the son tries to help tries to uh, do the work of the people this guy Groot is symbolic for all human beings I think he's like the a good he tries to be a good human being to, to keep everything working his name is Groot and uh we can we can see there's also a church people that go to church we can see the symbolic cross here and there's a woman and she's like leading the procession so to speak and uh and i think that's very and she's protecting the children basically which is highly symbolic there's a lot of holy mother symbology even judaism there's a shekinah and all this stuff and uh Mostly we can see third person perspective in this in these shots, but there's also some direct shots into the camera, which surprised me. And uh, and the, the symbol symbolism is especially there with the uh, Tower of Babel here. So we can see again contrasting old myths and futurism. And um, the style is also reminiscent, I think, of Art Deco and stuff. This guy, I think, is representative of all scientists and it shows like the caricature of science which she tries to be more righteous than everything else this guy even looks a bit like einstein i think and uh um he is trying to she's trying to invent a machine just like god has created everything which is basically symbolized by feeder and here the father basically god try, doesn't say anything to to a road run, trying to um invent something he's not saying yes or no so he lets him do it so everything works in the plan so we can also see the symbolism of satanism in the back here and this uh futuristic thing thing goes on i think this shot tries uh, shows very much that this was a good um a blueprint for frankenstein in the lab like man tries to be like god but he can only uh create a false light like this uh machine light or electric light, and we can also see this contrast, I think, symbolically in the movie because the candle is being blown out or a real light is being blown out at another point and stuff like that. But the experiment here is about 
creating the horror of Babylon. And there's uh, even the, the movie is made up in three parts, like the old story, which is like the story of the Bible. And there's an intermezzo and there's a new story. Like afterwards, it starts with the introduction of the horror of Babylon. Basically, it looks like this. And um, and also this, uh, it works with um, with montage here. You know, we can see some kind of effects that they could do here. You can see the look directly into the camera. But there's a lot of more symbolism from the Bible, especially the seven deadly sins. And I think the movie actually tries to show what the seven sins will make, will do with the world. Like, like this, when there's false woman, this is the false uh, woman, the false Maria. This is the machine who, could, who tries to destroy everything that God or the Father has created. And what this causes is that people die, even though that feeder tries to save everybody at their work. So corruption and uh, destruction are very close uh, related. And, um, but feeder tries to, uh, he, he finds his savior urge, but all he can do is help Maria because actually Maria is trying to, is collecting um, everybody. He's, she's going to the bells and, and uh, gets the people together. And ultimately, they get back together, she and Feeder and the father. And we can see them working out of church. And that's like the, the um, end of the movie. But uh, here we can see them that the people unite with her at the bells, you know. And uh, I think the, these contrasting white and close-ups are very uh, much telling. And there's also this mystery man. And we can see at the, at the grains of the picture that this is part of the old material. So sometimes we really don't know who these people uh, symbolize, but it's very interesting and intriguing and makes us think all the time while we watch the movie. Well, basically, one more thing. This movie, I didn't know, is the first document that has been kept in the... Um, it's, it's called the first memory of the world document inside of the UNESCO World uh, Heritage, I think it's, it's called. All right, that was my, my analysis, and I uh, hope you liked it.